Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. Welcome to Monday Mastery, previously known as Monday Magic Intuitive Energy Reading. Yes, I will take two minutes to touch on the energy we experienced last week, but primarily this is a timeless message that will offer guidance based on how to move forward, whether it's in this week specifically or at the appropriate time when you happen to stumble across this message. So like I said, we'll take that two minutes to talk about last week because holy cow, was it some big energies. Very, very fascinating. The week actually started last Monday with nine C-class solar flares. And if that was any indication of what the week was going to look like, we should have seen what was coming because we then stepped into, let me see, I had a, a couple of notes here. I want to make sure I tell you in the right order because otherwise it kind of feels funny. We'll start with today. Today, there's an, a slightly elevated KP index. We're fluctuating between that three and four range. Nothing major, but this is not a surprise considering we had um, four M-class solar flares on Saturday and three X-class solar flares in a matter of 24 hours uh, between Wednesday and Thursday. So it was so powerful that it actually caused cell, cell phone outages and radio blackout, as, as they say. This was crazy. I have never seen multiple X-class solar flares in a 24-hour period. So it has been speculated that we are at the solar maximum. This would suggest that is highly likely. Who knows how much farther this could go, um, but it, it was tremendously impactful. Obviously, if it takes out cell phone towers, it is highly affecting us as well. I can tell you um, Wednesday night, I did not sleep hardly at all. It was as if I had my finger in a light socket. It was kind of that um, eclipse feeling. And, and it's also, it, it felt like, well, maybe this is the full moon, but the full moon wasn't full until Saturday. So to be awake Wednesday night, with the full moon peaking on Saturday was highly unusual. Usually it's only that the night of, or maybe one or two nights on the other side of the full moon that we feel sort of um, the inability to sleep. So it was very, very unusual. Uh, obviously the, the solar flares highly impact our bodies. We are electromagnetic beings. So if it's gonna take out a cell phone tower, um, it would be unreasonable to think that it doesn't affect us. Um, I was extremely activated on Thursday feeling like, and there was very much a clearly nervous system activation because it, it felt like it was dysregulation. And yet, no matter what I did, drinking chamomile tea and putting my feet on the ground and yoga and breathing and meditation, I couldn't quite fully bring it back down. I talked to some friends and some uh, clients, colleagues, and some were feeling ex excessively tired and some were feeling really, really energized. Many people could not sleep that night. And what's interesting is the sleeplessness did continue um, even last night, even after um, the uh, the so the uh, solar flares and the the full moon had passed. There's still difficulty sleeping. A lot of people having very um, vivid, active dreams, many strange dreams, oh, just over and over and over, dreaming all night. Um, so I too am I'm also experiencing that. So. Lots going on. I think there's some unmeasurables involved here as well as the full moon, the solar flares, and we are we're very much in eclipse season. So just bring all of that together and you know the peaking solar maximum as well as whatever else is happening as far as our ascension towards our creator. Um, there's plenty to keep us awake at night. Probably good news, the Schumann resonance was relatively quiet all week. So um, there's that. So sort of getting into what are we dealing with? What is the guidance going forward? Um, there very much is this sense of like the light continues to break through the cracks. And it makes me think of, um, you know, someone who has been sort of um, locked up in a barn or, you know, a prison cell and, and there's a crack in the wall. We can see the the light kind of coming through the crack and the crack is getting bigger, bigger. So I envision this um, barrier as the blocks, the things that have kept us from manifesting our goals and dreams and desires or kept us from moving forward. There, there has been very, very significant uh, feeling of stuckness and stagnation for quite some time now. And it's, it's good news. The winds of change are blowing. And Oftentimes in the fall, I'll get that sense when the wind is blowing, you can feel we're just transitioning. Um, and yet that's happening, you know, it's not fall <laughs> here for us. 
Um, it, it should be technically winter and yet it looks like spring outside. The robins are bouncing around on the ground. Um, it's projected to be 65 degrees here tomorrow. So it is very much a, a an early spring. Um, I would say it, it feels like that spring feeling of life breaking forth two months early. Um, there's very much a, a sense of rebirth and resurrection and just a coming back to life, a renewed zest for life, a renewed sense of aliveness within my being. Um, I, I can, I can, it's almost like I can, I can feel, or I can smell, or I can sense this new beginning, the new energy that is around. I'm starting to get glimpses of what this new future might look like. And this is the third week in a row. I will say it again. Um, Lori from morning gratitude likes to say, we are not starting a new chapter, we're writing a whole new book. And I very much have a very strong resonance of truth in my body that the future is not going to be like the past. It is going to be completely different. And yet it is very, very slow to come in. It is like a snail's pace and it can be easy to feel impatient. It can be easy to fall into the ego tantrum of it's not happening. It's never going to happen. It never happens for me. Everybody else gets it. So really be careful and prevent that from happening because that absolutely will keep you stuck. It absolutely will block whatever is trying to come to you. So do not let the ego throw that tantrum of this never works for me, right? Recognize that as the ego and ego is edging God out, right? So it can feel like we're ahead of the curve. And the theme of being an early adapter came to me multiple times last week. So it's very much confirmation that we are, we are very much ahead of the curve. I love in my uh, corporate product development days, you have the bell curve of adoption, right? In the beginning, you remember way back when our, our phones used to be hooked to the wall. And then it was so strange, that guy that walked around with the brick phone on his head. And you're like, what is that guy doing? And oh, the antenna thing. And the it's got a cord and it's connected to your car or whatever, you know, depending on the the uh, stage that you felt that. Um, but for those of us who felt like that's really weird and I'll never do that, we were the ones who were not adopting, but the person who was, they were at the peak of the bell curve, right? So they're the early adopters. And what happens is, yes, there's many who resist and then they start to adopt and then everyone has it and then it fades into the next trend. So just know that if it feels like I know this to be true, I know where I'm going, I know what I'm creating my life, right? With trauma spotting, this is very different. It is, it is somatic healing, which has existed for a while, combined with energy healing using divine source tapping. That's unheard of. Nobody gets it, right? It's like, what the heck is this thing? But it works. And it was not something I created. It was delivered through me. And so there's this feeling of like, people don't get it or they're not really, right? We're, we're at the beginning. So whatever your thing is, your life purpose, your gifts, your talents, if it's not taking off, because that's what this channel is for, mainly, primarily those people who are willing to step into their gifts, their talents, and their purpose, it's okay if it's going slow. You're not alone. You're not the only one. It is happening. We are very much at the peak. And the beautiful part of the um, adoption phase or adoption bell curve is there's exponential growth. Once you hit that phase where people finally start to adopt, you're catapulted up, right? So just remember, stay ready, stay in waiting, stay in patience and trust, spend your time communing with the divine, surrendering your egoic desires, surrendering your timeline, surrendering your expectations, stay in faith, stay in trust, stay in flow, the energy is expanding. If you, I love uh, chakra cleansing and clearing every day, really spending time with these centers. And if you're spending time with your heart, you'll get a sense. I'm getting a sense that, man, it, you know, it used to be this big and maybe this big. And now it's like the size of the room and the size of the town. And it's, the energy is expanding. The heart is opening wider and wider and wider. And just think of the heart as your generator, the heart as your portal to source and heaven on earth and all of the beautiful things that we desire, right? Get excited about the future and refuse to let that ego tantrum come in. Refuse to let fear and doubt block you, right? There is a strong call to detox, cleanse, 
purify, release any type of restriction, whether it's like tight clothing or, you know, a lot of alcohol causing a lot of inflammation or whatever the restriction is in your life, really focus on cleansing, clearing, and releasing because you are asking to be, you're asking to, you're being asked to prepare for the future, for what is to come, right? Allow it to flow into you when we have blocks and resistance and tight clothes. I know it sounds silly, but this is something that's, you know, on my, my, uh, request list from the divine. Um, when we are clinging to those restrictions, we are not allowing things to flow through us or to us, right? So we don't have to make things happen. We have to allow things to happen. We have to receive, we have to understand the nervous system state that is blocking and resistance, the fight, flight, on or freeze mechanisms. If you are stuck in social media addiction, that is a dorsal vagal state. We're very much in freeze response. This is what's keeping you stuck and keeping you from your purpose. Please do reach out if you need help. I have um, something that just came through today, the Life Purpose Launch Program. It's going to be amazing. More to come on that soon, but you don't have to stay stuck, right? We have to be able to understand how to step out of that activated nervous system state into trust, rest, digest, healing, growth, repair, or our parasympathetic nervous system state that will allow us to receive, right? The eclipse season is upon us. It is coming in. It's just a question of, are you able to, are you able to hold it? Are you able to be the person who can receive it? Know that it is very common for us to, to focus on the spilled cups instead of the full cups. And when I was having, I was struggling with an ego, ego tantrum a week or two ago, and the guidance was the, the five of cups, right? The, the tarot card that depicts the person staring at the five cups that are spilled. And yet behind them, there are five full cups. And that is so common for those of us who've experienced uh, difficult childhoods, toxic relationships, um, any point in our life where we just didn't feel safe, seen, heard, cared for, or loved, whether or not you identify as having trauma really doesn't matter because society is traumatizing. We have a strong tendency to focus on what is wrong, what has not come yet, what is what what have I asked for that I have yet not yet received? Our tendency is to look for problems when we've got equally just as many full cups right behind us. And all we have to do is turn around and look at those right? So stay focused on the good, gratitude. Um, you know, there's many ways to say this, but essentially our suffering is caused by focusing on the spilled cups instead of seeing the full cups, right? Remember that worry and trying to control things, it sends the signal to the divine. I don't trust you, right? I don't, I, I have to make this happen. I have to keep things under control because I don't trust you. So we re really want to get out of God's way. Stop trying to do God's job. Just be a vessel that can receive through faith, trust, and surrender instead of fear, control, worry, struggle, resistance, right? Ask and you shall receive. You absolutely will receive, but you have to become the one who can receive. Don't let fear and impatience block you and keep you stuck. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. It shouldn't be a struggle. It's not meant to be a struggle. Yes, challenge. Yes, being molded into who you were made to be will be uncomfortable, right? Just like the story we had last week around, you know, God cutting down the bamboo and carving it into a flute. And yes, the bamboo suffered when it was carved and cut, and yet it became the most valued possession and went everywhere with God. And all of the rest of the bamboo were jealous, wanting to be that, but it requires the molding and shaping, right? Right. If you see something good in your life, if you see a beautiful couple in love and you want a relationship, if you see someone successful in business and you want to be in your purpose, see it as driftwood. Say, thank you. Thank you. Yes. May I have some, please. This or something better. And driftwood, what that means is when people were lost at sea, they would get excited when they saw a piece of wood floating in the water. If they saw driftwood in the water, that meant land was close by. So that relationship or that purple success, person successful in business, it's driftwood. It's the universe saying, do you want some of this? You say, yes, please. Yes, thank you. May I have another? Yes, please. I want this, 
And I know I have faith the size of a mustard seed. I will have this. Thank you for the promise that you will deliver this. And I am willing to surrender my ego in the process of becoming the person who can receive it. Okay. Remember intimacy with the divine, become purely source led, look to the right, cast your net to the right, look for those thoughts of guidance, listen through your Claire, however you receive it. I have feeling and knowing, sensing, um, know how you receive the message, ask intelligent questions, ask to be guided towards your purpose, and then tap in. In those moments where we feel like we're getting impatient or we're the early adopter, we're ahead of the curve, it's like, what do I do with my time? Keep building the business. Keep becoming the person who can hold it. Keep cleansing, keep detoxifying, and stay intimate with the divine. Create that intimate personal relationship with your creator. Talk to him every single day. Do I go right? Do I go left? Do I have an apple or a banana, right? Let source lead. You can rest. You can be in ease. I love my favorite saying lately is peace that passes all understanding. There is zero evidence outside of me that I should be at peace right now. And yet there is ample evidence that I should be in peace right now because the creator of the universe who created everything around me is in charge and I don't have to make it happen. I just have to receive. That is all I have for you. I love you, my friends. Please do make sure you share this if you know anyone who could benefit from it. Otherwise, like and subscribe if you're on the YouTube channel. Otherwise, comment below to help spread this word and I will see you on the next one. Namaste, my friends.